pretty face, funny hat. That's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat. That's what my Dagwood is. Blondie's not always right. I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright. Long as he thinks they're his. Life for us is fun and crazy. Baby dumpling. Us and Daisy. What a family. Incredible. Bumsteadable. <laughs> Hurry, you'll miss your butt. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's too much for us. As long as with me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me there's you. something missing. Oh, your trousers are out in the kitchen. I left them there last night when I pressed them. Oh, I was going to have them pressed. You saved me 25 cents. Thank you. I found 75 cents in your pocket, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. May I introduce you to the Morning Glory Shaving Kit? Three heavenly steps to a perfect shave. Yeah. First, you apply this cream to soften the beard. Yeah, but I'm not interested. interested. <laughs> you didn't let me finish. Huh? Now that your beard is as soft as the fuzz on a peach, we're ready to apply this sensational cooling shaving cream. Uh -huh. If I were to tell you that our chemist labored for over 10 years mm. to perfect that wonder cream, what would you say? Yeah, I'd say I was late for work. Me finish. Now that your face is as smooth as yeah, the no. petals of a budding rose, yeah. you'll want to experience that fresh, tingly, alive sensation that comes with the application of this wonderful after-shaving lotion. I will. You can have either lilac or gardenia scent. Which would you prefer? Well, I always kind of like lilac. Good. Now, some people... What am I saying? I haven't time for this. You are missing the thrill of a lifetime. Yeah, well, I'm missing my 840 bus, too. Wait for me, driver. Look, brother, if you got anything to sell, save your breath. That guy in there won't listen to you. He's late for work. You telling me? I'm his boss. Where are my trousers, anyhow? There they are, Daddy. Huh? Oh, that salesman again. No, no, no! Yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Dittis. I thought you were a salesman. Well, right now, I wish I was. For a brass knuckle company. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Dithers. You ought to shoot people for wearing things like that. Uh, oh, yes. Um... Why, Mr. Dithers. Hello, Blondie. Well, oh, Dagwood. Uh -huh. Now, Mr. Dithers, I know Dagwood is late, but I can explain. Let's not go into that, Blondie. I have more important things on my mind. Oh. 
Something unexpected came up in that Delaney deal, and I'm leaving town for about three weeks. Mm. Now, since you're the oldest employee in the firm, I'm putting you in charge of the office. Oh. <laughs> against my better... Oh. So there'll be a little bonus for you at the end of the month. Oh, a bonus? How much, Mr. Dithers? <laughs> I'll forget that for the moment. Now, the important thing for you to do is to act like an executive, if possible. Try to be dignified the way the head of a company should be. Oh, I will, Mr. Dithers. <laughs> Well, there's a few matters I want you to take care of. Uh, you better take some notes, Dagwood. Oh, oh yeah. Thanks. Contact Jonathan Butler, Butler Theaters Incorporated, and find out if he's really going to build an outdoor theater. Mm -hmm. Contact Jonathan Butler about theater. What else, Mr. Dillies? Well, as for the rest of us, stay out of trouble. Just mind my business and keep it moving. Mind your own business and keep moving. I will. Hmm? Goodbye. Oh, oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Dagwood, it'll be a wonderful experience for you, being boss three whole weeks. Uh-huh. Do you think you can handle the job? Oh, now, how can you think of a thing like that? Well, you know Ollie and the rest of the boys at the office. They might make it a little difficult for yeah, you. Yeah, well, I'll take care of them. Oh. Well, goodbye, dear. Goodbye, dear. Dagwood. Huh? Oh. Oh. Oh, Dagwood. Huh? <laughs> yes, Ollie. Mmm. <laughs> Dagwood, we want you to know in the absence of Mr. Dithers, we're all behind. We certainly we are. are. We're with you, Dag. Oh, gee, fellas, thanks. Think nothing of it, Dag. Uh, there you are. Yeah. Dagwood. Imagine, Dagwood, you're going to be here for three weeks. I'm glad for you, boy. Oh, thanks again, Ollie. You know, I thought you and the others might be sore about my taking over. Sore? Why, of course not. Oh, well, I guess I got you fellas all wrong. I thought you might kid me and pull a couple of gags. Right. Dagwood, what do you think we are, children? Oh, you make us feel terrible. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Ollie. I'm sorry, fellas. That's all right. Oh, that's all right. Never mind. Yeah. It's all right, Dad. <laughs> oh, gee, fellas. <sighs> well. <laughs> I would have missed that for the world. Wise guys. You'd better watch out for some more of their shenanigans. Yeah. Thanks for the tip, Mary. But they won't catch me again. Oh, miss, uh, I'd like to see Mr. Dithers, please. Well, he's out of town right now. But you can see Dagwood Bumstead. He's taking Mr. Dithers' place. Oh, all right. Uh, who should I say is calling, please? The mayor. The mayor. Yes. Yes, Manny. Mr. Bumstead, the mayor is here to see you. Send him in. The mayor? Oh, so she's going to be a wise guy, too. Mr. Bumstead, the mayor is here to see you. It's a great honor, Your Honor, having you visit us. <laughs> I just happened to be in the building and thought I'd take care of some official business personally. Now, I mustn't keep Mr. Bumstead waiting. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So, I didn't fall for that gag, did I? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> oh, no. You, you aren't. Yes, I am the mayor. Do you always give visitors this damp reception? Yeah, uh, no. Sir, Dagwood thought the men were playing a joke on him. They did before you arrived. So you can't blame him for thinking you were another joke. Oh, I, I mean, well, all the men have been teasing Dagwood since he took Mr. Dither's place. Yeah. 
I think I understand. I had the same experience some years ago when my boss put me in charge of the office. Now, if you're through giving an imitation of Old Faithful, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, here. Oh, no. Uh, oh, won't you come in, Your Honor? As for you, I think you'd better clean up this mess. Oh, no. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes. And now, Mr. Bumstead, I... Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. No. I'm sorry, Your oh, Honor. Well, thank you very much. Uh, now, Mr. Won't Bumstead... Won't you have a chair? Oh, uh, no. Uh, I'll only be a minute. Oh, won't you uh, have a cigar? No, I don't smoke, thank you. Yeah, I guess uh, you don't. Now, Mr. Bumstead... Uh, oh, I, cigarette. I do not smoke. Uh, uh, no, I guess you don't want to. Uh, Mr. Bumstead, I... Uh, how about some water? Uh, no, I guess not. What I have to say will only take a minute. Uh, Mr. Hmm. I'm inviting some prominent men in the town to a meeting this afternoon at my office ah. to discuss a problem confronting our community. Oh. I'd like you to attend. Oh, I'd be <laughs> delighted, Your Highness. Uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Mayor. But I don't think Mr. Dithers would want me to leave the office. <laughs> oh, I know Mr. Dithers is a community-minded citizen, and I'm sure if he put you in charge of his office, he'd want you to represent him at this very important meeting. <laughs> well... <laughs> Then I'll come. <laughs> Fine. I'm sure Mr. Dithers is going to be very proud when he hears of your added responsibility. Uh, yes. <laughs> As an up-and-coming young executive, Mr. Bumstead, uh -huh. you ought to gain a great deal meeting some of our older businessmen. Oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> well, see you at three. <laughs> I'll be there. <sighs> Oh, well, Mary, get Mrs. Bumstead on the phone. I want to tell her where I'll be for the afternoon. Gosh, Daggett, what do you think the meeting will be about? I don't know, but when you're an executive, you never know what kind of a problem is going to hit you. <laughs> so that's why I asked you here today. You nine men represent our fine, progressive little community. Not only are you the backbone, but the very heart of our town. So, in the name of our community, I'm asking you to take part in an experiment which is both social and economic, and which, if successful, might influence other communities to take part in a similar program. <laughs> Behind that door is a group of discharged servicemen, members of our community. They're young people who never had the opportunity to work, whose plans for the future were interrupted by their country's need of them. They've served their country well, and now it is our turn to serve them. Well, that's right, that's Come right. Boss. Yes, sir. Okay, Mayor, we're with you. <laughs> yes, sir, we're with you, Mayor. Excuse me. Thank you. I knew I could count on you to give these veterans the guidance they need. You see, their various backgrounds and experiences have equipped them to do all kinds of work. But most of them need time to discover exactly what kind of work they want to do. Meantime, they don't want to sit around until their minds are made up. We don't want them to sit around either. <coughs> Gentlemen, our friends behind that door need jobs. And before they leave this room, I want to see that they have them. Right. Right there. Right there. Are we supposed to give out jobs? Sure. Splendid idea, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'll call in each individual and get you acquainted with his background. And if you feel you can help him, just holler. That's fine. What are we waiting for? Okay, Dick. Well, let's go. Let's, let's go. <coughs> Excuse me. John, will you call in Corporal Atterbury? Now, this is the way to do things. Cut out the red tape and the questionnaires and get right down to business. Um, right over there, Corporal. I told you about this meeting, Corporal, and who these men are. They're very anxious to help you. I see you were in the anti-aircraft, Corporal. Yes, sir, I was. I don't imagine you'd like a job in a boiler factory. Well, no, sir. <laughs> I thought not. Well, I've got a large nursery just outside of town. I grow all kind of flowers. Works pleasant and the pay is good. You'd be doing me a favor if you took a job out there. Well, sir, it sounds sort of nice and peaceful. When do I start? Well, as far as I'm concerned, right now. How about coming out to the place with me, looking over the nursery, and having dinner with my family? Suits me. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. So long, boys. <laughs> Goodbye, George. Ah, we're really cooking. Never thought our soldier would get a job and a dinner invitation in one minute flat. Call in Daniel Carter. Let's see if we can't break that minute record. Oh, 
You going to offer someone a job, Mr. Emery, huh? Why, sure. Aren't you? Yeah. Well, I... 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 I did. Gentlemen, especially you, Mr. Emery, meet Daniel Carter. Uh, how are you, Dan? As you will note by the insignia on his sleeve, he served as radio technician in the U.S. Navy. Well, suppose you carry on, Dan. Well, as the mayor said, I'm interested in radio, sir. Well, don't go any further, sailor. You're my boy, and I can use you. And if you haven't any plans for dinner, I have. You mean I've got a job? Yes, you sir. You certainly have, and a dinner <laughs> invitation, too. 30 seconds for that one, gentlemen. We're really moving. Well, good luck to you, Dad. Thank so you, long, sir. So long, so long, Mr. Bumstead, you're going to be interested in the next case. But who, me? According to my record here, this person graduated from college and took a number of architectural courses. Call Sergeant McDermott. Yes, indeed, Mr. Bumstead. You ought to be able to use this soldier. So let's see if you can break that 30-second record. Remember, it's job, dinner, exit. Yeah, but, <coughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, don't you think the sergeant might want... Huh? Huh? Won't you sit down? Sergeant McDermott, this is Dagwood Bumstead, an executive in a large construction firm here in town. I gave him a brief idea of your background, and, well, I'll let him take it from this point. She's all yours, Mr. Bumstead, so let's go. Huh? Oh, uh, yes, uh, I, uh, 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 that is... Uh, would you like a job, miss? Oh, yes, Mr. Bumstead. Well, uh, are you sure you wouldn't want to do something else, huh? Oh, no. I've always wanted to work in the construction office. I certainly do accept your offer. Y huh? Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I imagine you have a dinner engagement, huh? No, I haven't. Aren't you lucky, Mr. Bumstead? Uh, yeah. I guess I ought to phone my wife. Uh, sure, use the phone on the desk. I'll wait until you make the call. Yeah. Maple 4759. Oh, hello, Blondie. Hello, Dagwood. Where are you? Still at the mayor's office? Well, what was the meeting about, dear? Well, uh, I'll tell you when we get home, Blondie. All right. We? Who's coming with you? Uh, uh, Sergeant McDermott, Blondie. Uh, you see, I... A soldier! Oh, Dagwood, how nice. The children will be thrilled. I, I, I want to tell you about Sergeant... McDermott, Blondie, uh... Tell me when you get home, dear. I've got to rush and make dinner. Goodbye. Uh, oh, yes. Goodbye, Blondie. <gasps> oh. Everything set, Mr. Bumstead? Oh, yes, Miss uh, Sergeant. Call me Betty Jane, won't you? Uh, all right, uh, Betty Jane. Shall we go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, hello, Dagwood. Where's the sergeant? Uh, playing with Cookie and Daisy out front. Dagwood, I've prepared the most wonderful meal. Just the kind of things a soldier would like. Oh, yeah. Fried chicken, hash brown potatoes, uh, and apple pie. I sent Alexander to the drugstore for two 50-cent cigars. Uh, oh, cigars. Uh, cigars? Guess what else I did? <laughs> I called up that cute Gracie Perkins down the street, and she's coming over after dinner to meet Sergeant McDermott. Oh, no, you shouldn't have done that, Blondie. Why not? Well, you see... How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> this is Sergeant McDermott. <laughs> you seem surprised, Mrs. Bumstead. Do I? Oh, well, I'm not. Really, I'm not. <laughs> Did you think I was a man? Oh, of course not. I knew all the time you were a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the cigars for the sergeant. 
Uh, meet my son, Alexander. How do you do? How do you do? And this is his friend, Tommy Cooper. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, wouldn't you like to go upstairs and clean up before dinner, um, Sergeant? Yes. Oh, hey, hey, call her Betty Jane, Blondie. Oh. I'll show you the way, Betty Jane. Oh, gee, Mommy, let me. I want to show her my doubts. Well, all right, dear. Forward. March, General. <laughs> well, let's have it. Oh, well, uh, you see, well, you see, Blondie, it, it was this way. Oh, I've never had such a delicious meal. You must let me help you with the dishes. Oh, I should say not. The children can do them, and we'll all go in the other room and talk. Oh, yes, that's right, Betty Jane. It's about your working at the office. Blondie and I talked it over before dinner, and we decided... That you'd be ever so happy working for Mr. Dithers. Oh, yes, indeed. You... Huh? We consider it a privilege being able to help you. When I was overseas, I always hoped that when I came back, I'd meet a family like you. You see, I never knew much about family life, traveling with my father from one military post to another. I know he'd have been very grateful to you for taking me in the way you have. You'll never know. Start doing the dishes, Alexander. Yeah, we'll put them all in hot water. I don't know how we can. Your father's already in it, up to his neck. Hi, Sonny. Hello. Say, hey, are you the new postman? That's right. Just got out of the army, and my boss assigned me to this route. Mind if I give you a tip about this route? <laughs> Not at all. Shoot. See that house there? There's a man in it named Bumstead who always leaves for work at this time. If you want to live to a ripe old age, look out for him. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, when he comes out of the house in the morning, he knocks down anyone who happens to be in his path. Well, thanks, kid. But I dodged bullets for 27 months, so I guess I can sidestep one solid citizen. <laughs> Good morning, Dagwood. Good morning. Where are the children? Oh, uh, Alexander took Cookie the Pups and Daisy over to Mrs. Cooper's. Mm. She's going to take care of them for me while I'm gone. Mm. Where are you going? With you. That's why I'm dressed up. Well, don't you remember? We're to meet Betty Jane at the office and get her settled. Blondie, I'm awfully worried about having her work for Mr. Dithers. Oh, now, Dagwood, we went over this thoroughly last night. You saw yourself after talking to her that she had a wonderful background, fresh ideas and ambition. Yeah, but there's no place for her at the office. There will be when Mr. Dithers gets back with the details of that Delaney deal he was talking about. But... Dagwood, you offered that girl an opportunity to work in the office, and we're not going to let her down. Besides, Mr. Dithers won't be back for three weeks, and in that time, I know she's going to prove how capable she is. Really, you should deliver the mail after he leaves. Then you'll be sure to avoid that human torpedo. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the tip, kid, but I'm not afraid. You see, I've been in five major battle campaigns. Oh, Alexander, is Cookie all right? Yes, Mommy. Uh Hello, Daddy. I thought you'd gone to work. No, it's early. I've got plenty of... I... No, wait! Oh, no. Alexander, get our hats and open the door. Oh. Oh. didn't tell me there were two torpedoes. No, but now you can tell people you were in six major battle campaigns. Come on, Alexander. 
Now, fellas, I saw her first, so I think I ought to take her to lunch. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Blondie Dagwood. I'm having such a nice time. Say, Dagwood, Miss McDermott told us you'd given her a job here. Well, yes, but but good for you, Dagwood. What? <laughs> we need some new faces around here, and I can't think of a nicer face to look at than Miss McDermott's. Aren't you sweet to give Betty Jane this welcome? I'll take you to Dagwood's office. That's where you're going to work. When Mr. Dithers gets back, he can make other arrangements. I'll dust the desk off for you. I'll open the window. Oh. If you like the furniture, move. I'll help you're you. Okay, you move the desk. Right. Hey, say, Dag, what do you think the old man will say when he finds out you hired a woman? Well, uh, she isn't getting much salary, and uh, she is smart, and she has a college degree. Well, that sounds very nice, uh, but uh, what if the big boy isn't impressed? Well, let me worry about that, will you, Ollie? After all, I was put in charge of the office here, so I have a right to do some hiring if I want to. Every time I make a move, I gotta think of dithers, dithers, dithers. Thank heavens he'll be gone for three weeks. Then I can do what I think is right around here. What does he think I am, a man or a mouse? A mouse. That's exactly what I think. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dinners, are you back? I bet you won't sleep a wink all day. Huh? Well, the Delaney deal fell through. Well, it's a burned up, I can't see straight. Where is everybody? In my office. In your office? Uh. Get them out here. Oh, never mind, I'll talk to the men there. Since we lost the Delaney deal, I'll have to cut down on the overhead. Maybe let a few of the boys go. Oh, you mean you're going to fire people? Yes, Jackson was hired only temporarily. What difference does that make to you? You're still going to work here. Mr. Dithers. Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, uh, why don't you wait a minute or an hour? Why? Well, I think we ought to put a mirror over here. And that Blondie, what's she doing in your office with the entire staff? Oh, just visiting. Uh, 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 Mr. Dithers, uh... Oh, uh, you remember you told me to find out if Jonathan Butler was going to build that outdoor theater? Yes. Well, uh, I called him and he says he is. Oh, well, fine. Did get the job? I don't know. You told me just to find out if he was going to build a theater. Income poop. Maybe I better keep Jackson and fire you. Well. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Oh, hello there. Mr. Dithers, what are you doing in town? Hello, Blondie. Uh, who's that girl in Dagwood's office? Oh, you answer my question and I'll answer yours. Oh, uh, Blondie, uh, Mr. Dithers came back kind of unexpectedly because the Delaney deal fell through and he's oh. going to uh, fire somebody. Oh, I see. Fire? Uh, not Betty Jane. Well, naturally not Betty Jane. Oh. Who's Betty Jane? Well, that girl in there. She's working for you as an architect. Working for me as an architect? Mm -hmm. Blondie, my nerves are raw. I could have a nervous breakdown without the slightest bit of encouragement. Now, I'm trying to remain calm, but I can't keep it up. Who hired that girl? Please, Mr. Dithers, not so loud. I don't want Betty Jane to hear. It would make a bad impression. Come on, let's go into your office. I know the way into my own office, and I can walk by myself. Now, I'm going to tell you all about Betty Jane. I only want to know who hired her. Oh, uh, Dagwood did, indirectly, but... You don't have to finish, Blondie. Now, if Dagwood hired her, he can tell her to go. Oh, Mr. Dithers, you mustn't fire her. Please, let me finish telling you about her. Blondie, don't upset me. What with the Delaney deal falling through and Dagwood losing a chance to pick up that Butler Theater deal, you can understand my emotions at this point. Dagwood, tell that woman we can't use her. Uh, yes, sir. Dagwood, don't you do it. Blondie, I've always had a great deal of respect for you, but you're forcing me to change my mind. I don't like the way you're acting either, Mr. Dithers. You certainly could be courteous enough to listen to me until I'm through. I'm in no mood to be courteous. Dagwood, do as I say. Yes, sir. Dagwood, stay where you are. Blondie, I'm getting very, very angry. So am I, Mr. Dithers. While you've sat there grumbling, I could have told you all about Betty Jane. How clever she is, how she's willing to work for practically nothing, and how she served in the I army. don't want to hear about Betty Jane. I don't want her working here. Is that plain, or shall I draw you a blueprint? You don't have to, Mr. Dithers. I don't think I want Betty Jane to work for you. In fact, I don't know why anyone works for you. Oh. Blondie, do you realize what you're saying? Perfectly. You're practically inviting me to fire Dagwood? Oh, no. Go ahead and fire him. 
I never realized what he had to put up with all this time. Blondie! But... You keep out of this. Do you really want me to fire Dagwood? Yes. All right, I'll do it. Oh, oh no, Mr. Davies, not now. Dagwood Bumstead, huh? you are fired! I, I, wait. Come on, Dagwood. But, Mr. Dithers, she's... Oh, Blondie, why did you do it? Oh, take it easy, Dagwood. I'll get Betty Jane and we'll leave this place. What we all need now is a good, strong drink. Somehow I can't help but feel that Dagwood's being fired was due to me. Oh, of course it wasn't, Betty Jane. As I told you before, Mr. Dithers and I differed about office policy, and Dagwood resigned. What will Dagwood do now? Oh, goodness. Any construction firm in the city would be thrilled to have him. And you, too. He might even open his own office. Well, why didn't we ever think of that before? What are you getting at? Dagwood in business for himself. <gasps> Dagwood, opportunity just knocked at our door. Uh, come in. Uh, oh, no. no. Oh. oh, Dagwood, you don't understand. We're going to open up our own office. You won't have to cater to Mr. Dithers or anybody. No. You're going to be your own boss. Uh. Blondie, do you really mean that? Oh, I certainly do. With Dagwood's experience and your ideas, we're bound to be a success. Oh, Blondie, it sounds wonderful. Uh, you and I will look for an office while Dagwood arranges the business details and attends to the contacts. And Betty Jane, you must come and live with us so we can work every minute. Well, let's drink a toast to the future. Dagwood. Huh? We're drinking a toast. A toast? Toast to what? The Bumstead Construction Company. The Bumstead Construction Company. The Bumstead Construction Company. <laughs> the Bumstead Construction Company? Well, yes, Dagwood. <laughs> the Bumstead Construction Company. Ah. Uh. Yes, I, I'll get in touch with you again, Mr. Hawkins. Thank you. Oh, dear, the same story. Yeah. They all got the announcement about the opening of the office, and they all wish me success, but uh, they won't give us a chance to do any work for them until they see what we can do for someone else. But, Blondie, how can they see what we can do for someone else when someone else is waiting to see what we can do for t someone else? Oh, dear. We've just got to get ourselves a deal. Yeah. Well, I've just about got all the prospects on the list covered. Wait a minute. Hmm? What about that Mr. Butler who wants to build an outdoor theater? Let's call him. Oh, no. Oh, no, he belongs to Mr. Dithers. Well, all's fair in love and business. You call him. Oh, yeah, but if Mr. Dithers found out... Dagwood, we've got a lot at stake. Hmm. We're not only trying to help out Betty Jane now, but ourselves. Yeah. Why, practically all our savings went into furnishing the office. Oh, Sam, am I going to get a chance to see it today? Yes, dear, this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah? As soon as you pick up your things at the old office. <laughs> now you call Mr. Butler. Hmm. Uh, Dagwood, hmm. let's try the social angle. Let's take him out to dinner. Hey, that's a swell <laughs> idea. All right, goodbye, dear. Yeah. I'll see you later yeah. at your own office. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> My own office. <laughs> Bromwell, Brunner, Bumstead. Ha! Ha! That's a funny name. <laughs> Incorporate here. You want to talk to Mr. Butler? Who's calling? Bum who? That son of mine come in yet? Looking for me, Dad? You bet I am. Come in here. I want to have a talk with you. Butler's just gone into a conference, Mr. Bumstead. No, I don't know how long it'll last. This time. You'll wait?
What's the matter with you, anyhow? I warned you months ago that I wouldn't pay any more of your extravagant nightclub bills. This is the result of my warning. More bills. All right, Johnny. I paid them. But after today, you and I are through. I'm having your name taken off the door. I didn't mind giving you a generous salary, but not for a two-hour working week. You're... Well, you're... You're just good for nothing. I, I've lost all faith in you. No faith? No hope? Looks like charity. And you won't get any of that at the Continental Club. Your credit has been stopped there. Mm, that makes me feel bad. The food at the Continental Club was so good. Yes, and expensive. So you're not really serious about this, are you? You don't think so? You just try and charge anything around this town and see how far you get. And don't come around here with any routines about reforming. I'm on to you, Johnny, and I'm not giving you any more chances. From now on, you're on your own. Maybe that'll make a man of you. Ready for your workout, Mr. Butler? You just had one. <laughs> I'll be right with you, Jensen. I hope you're gone when I come out. And will you stop sitting on the top of your spine? Oh? Have I got one? Oh. Yes? Someone called Bunstead wants to speak to your father. Says it's important. Oh, well, the old boy's in the gym now. However, as one of my last official acts as vice president, Junior will take the call. Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Butler. Oh, uh, Mr. Butler, uh, this is Dagwood Bumstead. I called you some time ago about that outdoor theater you're going to build. And I was wondering if we couldn't talk about it some more. Uh, maybe uh, over the dinner table? No, I'm afraid not, Mr. Bumstead. You see, I don't work... Dinner? You said dinner. That sounds like a splendid idea. Do you have a favorite place uh, you like to dine? Why, yes. I was just telling someone how much I enjoy the food at the Continental Club. They specialize in foreign dishes, and they're really terrific. Well, it sounds all right to me. Uh, eight o'clock will be fine. Uh, how will you know me? I'll be wearing a girl on each arm. <laughs> Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Continental Club? Yeah, but look, Ollie, I need some extra money, and this is a steal for $10. Look, where else could you find a letter opener made of a fish's backbone? Only in your office. I really don't need a dag. I... Hello, Dagwood. Hello, Mr. Dithers. I just came up to get some of my things. Oh. Well, before you go, there's something I want to give you. Mr. Dithers, if it's what I think it is... Oh, I'm uh -huh. sorry you feel that way, Dagwood. I, uh... Well, I don't want any animosity between us. Huh? Well, here's what I want to give you. It's your two weeks' salary. Huh? You had a vacation with pay coming to you. Oh, thanks. Hey, thanks. <laughs> I'll send someone over for my things. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I'm leaving for good. Goodbye, Mr. Dillis. Goodbye, Dagwood. <laughs> thanks for everything. That's all right. I was swell of you. Uh, nice association, Dagwood. Oh, it certainly was. Well... Good luck to you, fella. Goodbye, Mr. Dithers. All right. So long, Dag. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna miss that guy, Mr. Dithers. Well, yeah, I think I will, too. You know, he wasn't such a bad fellow when you come to think of it. Of course, he had his faults, but then who hasn't? Yeah. I'll admit he used to annoy me when he came in late, slept all morning in the office. Took two hours off for lunch. Brought the children and the dogs here when Blondie was away for the day. Sneaked out afternoons when the ball season started. Disorganized the office staff. You know, fellas, I... 
I think Mr. Dithers felt pretty bad about my leaving. I think I even saw a tear in his eye. Well, fellas, oh, my hat, I guess I left it at my office. Excuse me. Took advances on his salary, messed up important business deals, and nearly drove me into bankruptcy. Get out of here, you stupid ninny. Don't you ever come back. Oh, I, I'm sorry you said that, Mr. Dithers. Uh, Dagwood will be all upset. He told me he had a very important engagement tonight at the Continental Club with Jonathan Butler. You say Mr. Bumstead is going to pay the bill, Mr. Butler? That's right, Enrico. Tonight you'll get cash on the line for this dinner. You see, Mr. Bumstead happens to be president of the Bumstead Construction Company. Oh. Blondie? Oh. There aren't any prices on this menu. I wonder how much this meal is going to cost. I don't know, Dagwood, but whatever it is, we'll have to pay it. This is a big deal. We'll have to spend big money. Yeah. Betty Jane, you didn't have to fix your makeup. I think Mr. Butler is already impressed. Sorry to keep you waiting. You know, I never realized when I made this appointment that I'd be meeting such charming people. Folks, this is one restaurant that can really live up to its name. They can serve you practically any foreign dishes you like. Mrs. Bumstead, what would you like? A Russian, Swedish, Spanish, or French dinner? Um, I think I'll try the French dinner. Garçon? Monsieur? Madame would have a French repast. Oh, thank you. First of all, a soup au marron, then a salade de laitue à la crème, huh? côte de bœuf parisienne, petit poisson à la française, and a compote de cerise. Compote de cerise. How does that sound, Mrs. Bumstead? Oh, it sounds like French. May I order for you, Miss McDermott? If you'd like. I think you'll enjoy the Spanish dinner. Senor? <laughs> si, senor. The senorita will have sopa del bondiguias a la barcelonesa, pescado frito al andaluza, ensalada valenciana, filetes de cerdo con habas estofadas, pimentos rojos, rellenos con espinacas, and roscas y natilas. Whew. <laughs> and uh, I'll have my usual Russian dinner. Da, da. What's yours, Mr. Bumstead? Oh, uh, oh, I'll uh, have a, a Swiss cheese sandwich on the whole wheat. <laughs> Uh, toasted. What a dinner. Aren't you glad I suggested this place, Dagwood? Huh? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. How about a dance, Betty Jane? You don't mind my calling you Betty Jane, do you? Betty Jane? Not if you don't mind my calling you Johnny. Johnny. Johnny likes Betty Jane, and don't think that won't help our business deal. Well, see, your dinner should have cost about a dollar and a half, two dollars, three dollars in the salad. Oh, what stop about? figuring out the bill, dear. You'll find out what it is soon enough. Look. Four, Look at six. Johnny and Betty Jane. Huh? Don't they remind you of us when we first met? Bonnie. How can you think of love at a time like this? Dagwood, your sandwich couldn't have cost much. Yeah, but all those other things and all the wine that Johnny ordered. Well, dear, you have to spend money to make money. Yeah, but you don't have... Hey, that's right. Mm -hmm. If we clinch this deal, we won't have any trouble getting other contracts. Well, of course, dear. So, no matter what the bill is tonight, we'll pay it with a smile. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, oh. Hey, Blondie, mm -hmm. this isn't bad at all. Only twenty-six dollars. <laughs> if you look closely, sir, you will see that that is the bill for Madame's French dinner. <laughs> it is. And here is the bill for the young lady's Spanish dinner. Huh? Mr. Butler's Russian dinner. And here is your bill, sir. And my bill. Yes. The final bill, which includes the wines Mr. Butler ordered. It might be four dollars. Fifty cents, Bonnie. 
Remember what we said, dear. Smile. Smile? Oh. <laughs> time, dear. Mr. Butler will be here any moment. We're taking him out again. He's really taking you, isn't he? And for plenty? Alexander, what have you been telling Tommy? Well, Daddy has had to pay all the checks, hasn't he? Yes, but after tonight, he won't. We'll be all through with this running around. Your father's rehearsing right now what he's going to tell Mr. Butler. Johnny, I hate to bring up business right now, but uh, I've completed the plan for the outdoor theater you're going to build. <laughs> And I'd like uh, you to have a look at it. Huh? Won't you have another glass of wine? <coughs> there you are, old fellow. <laughs> now, when you're through drinking, I'll tell you all about it. You take your time. <laughs> I'll go ahead with my cheese sandwich. Johnny, now is the time to start. Oh, oh, Blondie, I was just telling Johnny that uh, our plan is finished. I hope he likes it, Dagwood. Oh. We can't go on like this night after night, spending what little we have on nightclubs. Gee, I know it, Blondie. Do all people who are in business for themselves have to do what we're doing? Sometimes I wish that I was back with Mr. D oh, no, Blondie, I, I don't mean that. Do you really wish you were back with Mr. Dithers? Oh, oh, no, of course not. No, I like being on my own. I, I like living by my wits. It's expensive, though. Hmm? All that money we had to put out on office rentals, furniture, lawyers' fees, advertisements, and so many other things we didn't figure on. Yeah. Dagwood, we're almost broke. Oh, Blondie. Oh, if we get that butler contract, our troubles are over. We'll get it, too. So don't you worry anymore, and you just smile. <laughs> oh, Dagwood, I don't care what the neighbors say. You are a darling. Yeah. Yeah, huh? Evening, everybody. Oh, Betty Jane, you look lovely. Turn around. Oh. <laughs> Thanks to you, Blondie. Oh, it was so sweet of you to let me wear your clothes and stay here and have such a wonderful time with you, Dagwood, the children, and Johnny. <laughs> I wish there was something I could do in return. I told you I had some money saved up. Well... Uh, no thanks, Betty Jane. We don't need it. Uh, no. But if you would like to do us a favor, would you mind sitting out a few dances so that Dagwood can talk to Johnny tonight about the theater? Why well, wait till we get to the club? When he comes to pick us up, let's talk business right here. When he gets here, well... Oh, don't be <laughs> nervous, Dagwood. Johnny's easy to talk to. Oh. 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 Betty Jane, you let him in. Uh, Come on, Dagwood. Uh, we'll spread the blueprints on the table. Yeah. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Betty Jane. Hi, little people. Hello, Johnny. Oh. Oh. Flowers for two lovely ladies. Oh, thank you. Oh. Come on in. Greetings, Dagwood. 
Oh, uh, Tommy, tell your mother she won't have to come over to take care of the children right away. Uh, we're going to be here for a while. All right, Mrs. Bumstead. Oh, Johnny, this is so sweet of you. You're a sweet girl, Betty Jane. Say, uh, we better hurry. I made a reservation at the Rio Club. Did I say something I shouldn't? Why, no, Johnny. It's just that Dagwood wants to tell you something before we leave. Oh? Well, shoot, pal. What do you want to tell me? Huh? Uh, oh, uh, I have another glass of wine, John. Oh, no. Uh, we want to show you the plan for the outdoor theater. <laughs> we want to get your reaction. Yeah. We do hope you'll like it. Oh, uh, the plan. Uh. It's a little warm in here. Oh, it? no, here's the blueprint right here. Uh, it's a little rough, but uh, I, I think we did a pretty good job. <laughs> Dagwood and Betty Jane worked so hard on it, Johnny. Yeah. Even after we came home nights from the clubs. You did a good job. Some of these ideas are excellent. Then you'll give Dagwood the contract? The contract? Ah. Uh. Oh, uh, the contract. Uh, well, I, uh, you see, uh, I'd like to. But, uh, I can't. Huh? What do you mean, you can't? We don't understand. It seems to be getting hotter in here all the time. What's the matter with you, Johnny? Aren't you feeling well? Oh, I have felt better. And what's bothering you? Why are you acting so strangely? Well, you see, I... I'm not what you think I am. You're Jonathan Butler, aren't you? Yes, I'm Jonathan Butler, Jr. Oh. You mean there's a Jonathan Butler, Sr.? There is. He's not only my father, but my ex-employer. You see, a few days ago, he threw me out, and I was placed in a rather embarrassing financial situation. As a matter of fact, I didn't know where my next cocktail was coming from. The outdoor theater? Then... You have nothing to do with it. No, Blondie. Nothing at all? <sighs> I think I need some air. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Me, too. I'm sorry about this. Sorry? It's a pretty feeble word. I meant to tell you all about it when I first met you, but I was afraid if I did, you'd never see me again. The money they spent in those clubs. Didn't you realize they couldn't afford it? No, Betty Jane, I didn't. They were inviting me out. And I really thought he was a big shot. I didn't know they had so little or that they were counting so much on this deal. Oh, forget the alibis. You should have told the Bumstead you were no longer connected with your father's firm. Johnny, you're a heel. You're right. I am. It's funny, when my father calls me names, I don't care, but... somehow when you do... Say, wait a minute. My father won't speak to me, but I could give Dagwood his home number. Maybe it isn't too late to help the Bumsteads. Well, of course it isn't too late. Maybe it isn't too late for you to help me. Oh, I, I want to talk to Mr. Butler, Sr. This is Mr. Butler, Sr. Who is this? Dagwood Bumstead. What is it you want? <clears throat> I'm uh, president of the Bumstead Construction Company, and I want to submit a plan to you for that outdoor theater you're going to build. I see. Just a moment, please. 
Ever hear of the Bumstead Construction Company? Well, sure, so did you. You had dinner with Bumstead last week. I did? The Continental Club. Oh, Continental Club? Yeah. Well, that means he must be some friend of my son's. And this whole thing is probably a gag to pick up some money. Before you go any further, Mr. Bumstead, I want to make something clear to you. Oh, go right ahead, Mr. Butler. He wants to make something clear to me. <gasps> And tell him to continue staying away from the office, and that goes for you, too. Oh, Dithers, I... I'm too upset to continue this. I, I haven't slept well in the last few nights, and this incident will probably keep me awake tonight. Uh, that son of yours has you on a merry-go-round, eh? Oh, he certainly has. The boy has ability, but what does he do with it? Picks up with fly-by-night schemers like this, this bumstead fellow. Mm. Oh, well, I don't want to bother you with my personal problems. Suppose you come up to the office tomorrow morning and we'll definitely close the deal. Fine, I'll bring the contracts up for your signature. In the meanwhile, uh, <clears throat> don't let that bumstead fellow upset you. <laughs> he never did me. <laughs> chance. Yeah, but if we could... The old man would catch on. He's really steamed up about me. But I'm gonna get you in to see him if it's the... Dagwood, huh? you're gonna see my father tomorrow morning in his office and show him your plan. But, Johnny, he'll leave word not to let Dagwood in. Oh, yeah. anybody showing up with a blueprint will be thrown out. Yes, I know, I know. But Dagwood isn't gonna show up as a contractor with blueprints. He's gonna show up as a masseur. As a who? Look, my father's got a guy, Jensen, comes in every morning to give him a massage and a rub down. Ah. Now, Jensen owes me a favor, see? And I'm positive I can persuade him to let Dagwood take his place. Uh, oh, no. Might work. Sure, it'll work. It's gotta work. Oh, oh, no. No. oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. What can I do for you? Uh, well, the Jensen ain't feeling so good today, so he sent me over to work on Mr. Butler. Miss Phelan, have you the... Yes? He's pinch-hitting for Jensen, Mr. Butler. Oh. You're a pretty muscular fellow. Uh, uh, no, it's the cotton. Uh, I mean, it's not. Well, we uh, let her get going. Hmm? All right. Uh, my gym is just off my office. You go in and I'll join you. I don't want to be disturbed, Miss Phelan. What if Mr. Dithers wants to see you? Oh, send him right into the gym. All right, Mr. Butler. Didn't that mass say look sort of strange to you? Well, frankly, I wouldn't know. I'm so tired and sleepy at this point, I can't even see straight. But offhand, he looks to me as though he knew his stuff. Looks to me as though he were his stuffed. It is popular knowledge that proper massaging causes a person to relax and become drowsy. Mm -hmm. Some person, when massaged, fall into a peculiar hypnotic sleep. Well, let's get going. I don't believe I caught your name. Uh, Dag, uh, Mike. Oh, oh, well, just work on my neck and shoulders, will you? Dagger Mike. There. Oh. <sighs> well, come on, I'm a busy man. Are you going to work on me or not? Oh, well, yes, sir. Um, say, you're all right. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you're even better than Jensen. I am? Uh, <clears throat> say, Mr. Butler, Jensen told me you was uh, contemplating on building an outdoor theater. And uh, I got a sorting pal uh, who's an architect, and uh, he uh, asked me to... Uh, 
show you his plan he's got for one of them. Uh, would you uh, like to see them? Sure, Dagger Mike. You bring them around someday. Someday. I got them right here. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> not bad. Not bad, though. No. Oh, excuse me. You just keep on massaging me. I'll study that. Good morning, Miss Phelan. Good morning, Mr. Dithers. Mr. Butler's waiting to see you in the gymnasium. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you showed this to me. I'm glad you're glad, Mr. Butler. If you really like the plan, I can tell you the truth about me. You see, I'm... Hello, Mr. Dithers. So you're here. Mr. Butler, do you know who this man is? Well, I was just going to tell him. I'm Dagwood Bumstead. Look at you, all padded out like a mattress. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to ruin my deal with Mr. Butler. You want me to throw him out? Huh? Mr. Butler, do you want me to throw Mr. Bumstead out? Oh. Mr. Butler? He's asleep. And how is? What did you do to him? Well, I, I just, uh, well, I massaged his neck. Just trying to double cross me and sell him on your plan, huh? Well, he, he liked it. He did, eh? Excuse me. Well, let's see what it was he liked so much. Hmm, that's so bad. Hmm? Not bad at all. Oh, oh, that's what Mr. Butler said before he dropped off. Exactly how did he drop off? Oh, I tell you, I was just massaging his neck like this. And then all of a sudden, I did this. And then he went to sleep. And you believe me, don't you, Mr. Dithers? And I wouldn't do anything funny. <laughs> Mr. Dithers. J.C. J.C. Butler Theatres Incorporated. Who did you want to speak to? To Mike, the masseur. It's important. This is his wife. Well, he's working on Mr. Butler, but if it's important, I'll call the gym. Mr. Mr. Butler. Oh, no. oh. Ding, ling, ling, ling. Get up, everybody. Well, there's no answer from the gym. I don't understand it. You think something has happened? I'll be right up. Well, what is it, Blondie? Well, I don't know, but we'd better find out. It's lucky we call from within the building. Let's go. Are you all right, Mr. Dithers? Wake up. Could you, could you, could you, could you, could you? Mr. Dithers, please. Mr. Butler. Oh, Mr. Dithers. Listen. Huh? Well, I, I, I don't know what happened. Please, Mr. Butler, please. Dagwood, what happened? Oh, Blondie, am I glad to see you. Dad! Well, they're both sound asleep. What did you do to them? Nothing except to massage the back of their necks. Honest, Johnny, all I did was this. I had a feeling he was a madman when he came in. What have I done? Oh, no. Will you look at that? He must have strangled the three of them. We gotta take it easy, boys. The guy's got muscles. He's liable to fight like a tiger. Huh? We're not going to hurt you, fella. 
Pin his arms back and I'll cock him over the head. Get out of the way, lady. He hasn't done anything. Are you kidding? Those three guys stressed out there aren't sleeping. Well, they are, too. What? Oh. On your way. Oh. I'll take care of him. Now, listen. Now, wait a minute. Blondie! Blondie! Stop that! Oh. Hold it! Hold it! Oh. Oh. Wait, Blondie! Wait. Oh. Sleep. I feel like a new man. Say, I'll bet I could. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing here? I thought now, I told minute, you. Uh, wait a minute, Dad. I know how you feel about me, but uh, let me explain everything, and then then you can throw me out. Now, Dad, I know you don't give a hang about my opinion, but I'm telling you, Dagwood's plan for the theater is really sensational. Well, look at the way this entrance is laid out, and and this lighting set up here. I can't believe it. Huh? Johnny, you're like a new person, so help me. So help the Bumsteads, Dad. They really need this deal, and they deserve it. Oh. I'd like to, Johnny. I'm grateful to them for you, and for Mr. Bumsteads giving me the first good hour's sleep I've had in days. But I made a verbal promise to Mr. Dithers that I let him build the theater, and I can't go back on my word. Congratulations, Mr. Dithers. Yeah, I guess the best plan won, J.C. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mr. Bumstead. Your plan is better than Mr. Dithers. But my hands are tied, and there's only one man who can untie them. Well, I don't want to be a heel, but uh, business is business, and... Uh... And Dagwood needs it so much, Mr. Dithers. You're a real sport to let Dagwood have the deal. Huh? All right. All right, Dagwood, you go ahead and build the theater. After all, you and Blondie and Miss McDermott deserve a break. Huh? Oh! <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Dithers. Well, good luck again, fella. Aw, <laughs> uh, thanks again, Mr. Dithers. You're a swell guy. <laughs> and, uh, if you need any help raising the $100,000, uh, let me know. <laughs> thanks. $100,000? For what? Don't you know you have to put up a $100,000 bond before you start work on the theater? No, I didn't know that. Mr. Dithers. Yes? You heard what the man said. Yes, I did, Blondie. Look, why can't Dagwood and I do business together? With his plans and my financial setup, I can go to town. Uh, we can go to town. Oh, well, can we? I mean, shall we join forces, Blondie? Well, I'd kind of like to go back with Mr. Dithers. Well, Dagwood, you know I never interfere in your business affairs. Mm. Of course, Dagwood gets a bonus. Oh, yes. And a raise. Oh, yes. And you'll make him vice president of the firm. No. Oh. Why not? Because he's not ready for it. Oh, he certainly is. Well, I think I know more about it than you do, Blondie. Oh, I don't think you do. Why is that? Then he hasn't any executive ability. He has, too. He has not. No, no, what do you know about it? You're just his wife. You're just pig-headed. Well, all he's going to get is the bonus. Just the bonus. Well, all right, the race. Just the race. <laughs> <laughs> 